Welcome back to Living 757. You know, with, with, with so many laws in place in this country regarding immigration, each month we have new questions about, you know, how can we better answer those questions for people that do have those questions, right? right. And with us today we have Lachelle. Yes, right? Yes. Michelle Chisholm of Valverde Law in place of our good friend Hugo. How are you doing today, I'm Michelle? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Good. Well, great thank you be for here. being here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you look great. Oh, thank you. Um, so today we're talking about K-1 visas. Can you explain to us exactly what a K-1 visa is? Sure. So K-1 visas are um, for those U.S. citizens who meet someone from out of country. Um, it could have been, they could have met online. They could have met... Um, through chats or they could have met during one of their visits here. Okay. And so if a U.S. citizen meets someone, there's someone from another country, they want them to come over and marry here. So they would have engaged. Um, in that situation, you know, the parties are engaged to each other. They are fiancés. Right. It's fiancé visa. Um, they have to be eligible to marry, so you can't be married already. You have okay. to be single. Um, and you have to have visited each other within the past two years at least one time. That seems like not a very stringent rule when it comes to getting married. You have to have visited each other once? Well, for the fiancé <laughs> visa, yes, to apply. Wow. So you had to have seen each other, you know, one at least one time. Got gotcha. you. So, okay. so I think you had a situation for us. Oh, yeah. So to, just okay. disclaimer here, guys. Um, both of us are married to other people, so this is just yeah. a scenario. Just a scenario. Um, if we were to think about getting married, and Quincy here is from Ireland. Touch my show. <laughs> You're from Ireland, right? Uh, 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 yes, they're magically delicious. Like, <laughs> I, but the producer told me to say something like that. <laughs> that was... <laughs> that was not your turn. You told me to say that. All that right. was the worst Irish accent I've ever heard. Um, but say Quincy wanted to come over from Ireland and we wanted to get married. If we have one of these K-1 visas, we're good if we want to get married like within a year, right? Well, um, not quite a year. So basically, you would apply with an immigrant petition. It's a, a petition for a fiance. Okay. You would apply through USCIS and while you were remaining in Ireland. <laughs> and, <laughs> clearly. Um, <laughs> clearly. Clearly. <laughs> and then once it's um, approved, you, you have to go through a, a process that takes several months. And then you would come over to the United States and you have 90 days to get married. 90 days once he gets here? Once he gets here, yes. Now, what happens if he gets here, but then he's like having cold feet? and it takes longer than 90 days, does he have to leave? I came from Ireland. I don't Ireland. see why he would That's marry why I have you. <laughs> it is cold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you would probably need to leave if you're not intending to marry within 90 days. Really? Yes. Because the, the visa is strictly for fiancés, and so you have to have the intent to marry, and then you can stay once you've married. Otherwise, you should go back to Ireland. Who's... Who's watching over that though? To you know, it's got to be you know, like some someone is like like they're checking right. to see if you've gotten married. Like who's watching over that? So as part of the process, you will go through um, the Department of State. You will go through the National Visa Center, um, USCIS. You will have all of your information in the system. Okay. Uh, when you go through the airport, you know there's the stamp and the customs. Yes. Um, they will have you. You will have stamped your information. They will have your address on file. Um, it's possible, you know, that they could find you if they needed to. So they can find you and, like, literally kick your butt out of the country. Something like that, yes. There's <laughs> wow. a proceeding that would probably start, yes. Oh, process. man. But what, okay, so what happens if you do end up getting, what would that be, de deportation pretty much, right? If they make um, you leave? It's possible you could get into removal proceedings, yes. And then does that make it harder to get a second K-1 visa? Yes, yes. So okay. if you, basically, if you apply for the fiancé visa and, um, you intend to marry, but then you change your mind, and you're no, you know you're no longer in love. You can just leave. Oh. <laughs> Got gotcha. you. Now, how long does that process take? Like, uh, obviously, it's 90 days to get married. Yes. But how long is that process when you are discovered that you haven't done what you came here to do? So, to like, apply? is that immediate or is that like? Oh, to leave. Yes. You can leave at any time. Yeah. So you, I mean, you pretty much buy your plane ticket and. Go to the airport and leave once you realize you don't want to marry anymore. Is that what you meant? Well, yes, but I was just saying, like, if there was a like an authorized police or wh whoever to escort you, like, do you have an escort? Like, are they saying? Oh no, nothing like that. It's kind wow. of, it'll be on your own. Okay, so wow. yeah, there's so many. There's nothing. There's nothing okay. in place where they're kind of coming after you. Right. There's so many, um, and the, actually, the priority would be low. Awesome. Okay. Well, awesome. can you tell us how can somebody find you guys on social media on the on the web? 
Um, so yes, if you'd like to um, hire an immigration attorney, we are Valverde Law. You can look for us at ValverdeLaw.com or 757-422-8472.